Hello, I'm Don Brown, Scholar in Residence, Sustainability, Ethics, and Law, Widener University School of Law. This is a first video in a series of videos that explains why climate change is a civilization uh, challenging ethical question and why it's so practically important for policy to spot and discuss uh, the ethical dimensions uh, of this civilization challenging problem. The first reason why climate change must be understood as essentially, essentially as an ethical question is because it is people in some parts of the world, high emitters, including those in the United States, that are putting at risk other people in other parts of the world, uh, such as the people in Africa. So it's one part, it's people, high emitters in various parts of the world that are putting others at the world, uh, others in the world at risk, and they're often among the world's poorest people uh, who are most vulnerable to climate change. Uh, those that have are the victims have done little to cause the problem. The second reason why climate change must be understood as an ethical question. Uh, stems from the fact that the harms to the most vulnerable people are not mere inconveniences. They are potentially catastrophic, harsh impacts on life and ecological systems on which life depends. So climate change is an ethical question because it creates catastrophic harms to vulnerable people. For instance, there are tens of millions of people in India and Southeast Asia whose agriculture and drinking water supply depends upon river and stream level flows that are at great risk from climate change uh, because the glaciers that feed these, uh, some of the world's largest rivers in Asia are, are, are threatened by climate change, which threatens agriculture and drinking water. Another example of the harsh impacts to some is seen all throughout Africa. There are tens of millions of people in Africa who are extraordinarily vulnerable to desertification, drought, food, agriculture, diminishing water supplies. Africans are, are potential victims of climate change and they have done little to cause this problem. Another part of the world in which uh, people live that is extraordinarily vulnerable to climate change are the t tens, dozens of small island developing states, a lot of which are pictured here in the South Pacific, countries like Kiribati, uh, uh, Vanuatu, and many others, whose very existence is threatened by rising sea levels. These people have done little to cause climate change, yet there are extraordinarily vulnerable to sea level rise. A third reason why climate change must be understood essentially as an ethical question stems from the fact that, it, that the, the victims of climate change, the poorest people around the world, can't petition their governments to protect them. Their only hope is that the high polluters, such as people in the United States and other developed countries, will see that they, they not only have economic interests, but they have duties, responsibilities, and obligations to the victims. In other words, it's an ethical question because uh, those that are causing the problem must understand that they have duties to change their behavior. Having establish hopefully that climate change must be understood as a civilization challenging ethical question. Another fair question is what do we mean by ethics? Ethics is the discipline, it's the domain of inquiry that tries to understand and evaluate justifications that under certain facts, something is right or wrong, obligatory or not obligatory, or when responsibility should attach to human actions. Under this understanding, 
we should see that ethical claims are already in the climate change debate. People are making claims all the time about what should or should not be done about climate change. However, ethics examines the ethical justifications for those claims critically. Having established that climate change is a civilization challenging ethical question, a fair question that one would logically ask is whose ethics uh, should count. And here we find differences among people about whether religious views from Christianity or some of the world's religions should be the justification for ethical positions. Uh, many people make secular arguments based upon different kinds of ethical theories, such as utilitarianism, rights-based theories, etc. And so spotting the ethical issues leads to three possible consequences. One is agreement among ethical theories as to what is right is wrong. Another is disagreement as to what is right or wrong. But a third possibility was everyone may agree that a position is wrong, even though people disagree as to what ethics requires. As we will see in a few minutes, there's not one ethical uh, question raised by climate change, but a host of civilization challenging ethical and moral questions entailed by climate change. On some of these issues, there's actually agreement about what ethics requires. And that is because most people, most religions support something called the golden rule. There's a variety of well-accepted principles of international law that apply to these ethical questions. Uh, and uh, there, but there are other questions that there are, is disagreement as to what ethics requires. Yet, even in these cases, as we will see, um, there is often agreement that positions that governments have taken on these issues are ethically bankrupt, uh, even though there is disagreement as to what ethics requires. And so as we'll see later on, um, although there is disagreement among ethical theories as to what justice requires for some climate issues, um, it's easy to spot injustice. It's easy to conclude in some cases that um, some of the positions taken by governments on some of the ethical questions raised by climate change are clearly ethically bankrupt. There's agreement around the world. And therefore, it's important to spot the ethical issues raised by climate change, even though there is disagreement as to what ethics requires. It's practically important to do that. And so one might ask, what is the practical reason why it is important to spot the ethical questions? And the answer is, is that, that men, people and nations have duties, responsibilities, and obligations, not just economic interest. Yet justifications for doing nothing are often based upon self-interest. And therefore, spotting the ethical questions will expose the fact that many of the excuses not for not taking action are ethically bankrupt. Spotting the ethical questions can lead to agreement as to what is ethically problematic. A 30-year debate about climate change reveals that most people use what appear to be value-neutral uh, arguments of science and economics uh, to support non-action on climate change. And we will see that these positions are ethically troublesome. And so um, it's critically important to identify the ethical issues uh, entailed by climate change because for the most part, the debate has been played out using scientific claims and economic claims, which appear to be value neutral, but hide very controversial ethical issues as we will see. Um, and so it's important to examine the ethical questions uh, because they're often hidden in scientific and economic arguments about what the right thing to do is. Once we search for the ethical questions in these uh, scientific and economic arguments, we will discover that they hide extraordinarily controversial ethical positions. And so we end this introduction to the ethics of climate change by pointing out that 
climate change raises a host of different ethical theories, ethical issues, moral issues, uh, which raise different kinds of ethical questions, such questions as what should the greenhouse gas atmospheric stabilization concentration be? How do we divide up responsibility between nations and individuals? Who should pay for damages? Who should pay for adaptation? What are the ethical questions raised by economic self-interested arguments in opposition to climate change policies uh, that are based upon cost to the polluter? We end by noting that climate change raises a host of different uh, ethical questions, and we need to examine these questions ethically. We end part one of this introduction to climate ethics by summarizing, we hope we've shown why climate change is an ethical issue, why it's practically important to spot and discuss the ethical issues. Uh, this is the end of part one. Part two, we will, we will we look at these issues in the context of specific climate change ethical questions. Mm -hmm.